if you learn to read between the lines and to really understand yourself and the evolutionary origin of PMS and PMDD, you can start to see a pattern here. What happened to women about 100 years ago when they were starting to show signs of madness, if you will, because of like the extremely stressful society that they lived in? They got called hysterical. I hate pathologizing things that are not diseases. Because, hear me out. If a trait is maladaptive, which means it doesn't give you any benefit, actually it only gives you a sort of disability, it decreases your reproductive fitness, then why hasn't like natural selection gotten rid of this horrible plague? The answer is that often in maladaptive traits, there is a hidden benefit that has allowed it to creep into today's world. This morning, when I was a ball of pain in my bed, I asked myself, what if PMS and PMDD also played a role? I need to understand the evolutionary origin of PMS. I started googling papers on Google Scholar, like I usually do when I don't know something and I'm really curious and I'm, and I'm procrastinating again. Shit. Now you may be asking yourself, the hell is she talking about? Well, I understand that perfectly. I'm kind of weird, to be honest. Yes, I'm wearing my pajamas. Got a problem with that. What is the hidden benefit of this freaking curse of PMS and PMDD? Well, scientists have been wondering about that question for decades now. And in this review that I was reading this morning, which I found very interesting, most of these hypotheses are demolished. It's mainly because they were formulated decades ago by groups of old white men who, quite frankly, I doubt understand the root of female suffering. But one of these hypotheses was particularly interesting to me. Evolution made you the way you are for a reason. Now let's try to understand why. We're looking for a biological evolutionary explanation. So we need to look at the big picture, go back in time, to when women predominantly looked after the offspring. The hypothetical benefit of PMS and or PMDD in that situation was that if the relationship with a partner was not producing any offspring, then PMS would turn the woman into like a really cranky being <laughs> able to break up with that person and find a more suitable relationship to have babies. In today's society, the picture is much different. Not every woman will feel accomplished by having a family, and that's okay. But what I am saying is that maybe PMS still has a benefit, even for those who don't necessarily want to give birth. And what I think the benefit is, kind of like a little red light that goes on in your brain, much like when you're running out of gas, and that little red light turns on in your car dashboard. I mean, at least I would know that if I drove a car. It's telling you that there's something wrong. You need to do something about your current life. You need to break up with your current job that you freaking hate. You need to break up with your lifestyle, with your diet, what you're eating is making you sick. Or maybe you really are unhappy with your partner and it's time that you change that. Or maybe you're unhappy with yourself. And you gotta learn to love yourself. I know it's not easy and not everybody will be able to see the bright side to their PMS or PMDD. But what I do invite you to do is to rethink your relationship with it and to see it not as an enemy, but as a tough friend who is there to poke you. Okay, hit you with a stick, whatever. It is there to remind you to get up and fight for yourself. It won't leave you alone. People who have PMS, they wake up once a month. It may not be pretty. We may get called names. Okay, we're cranky. We're not that pleasant to be around with, but we're not overthinking. We're not too sensitive. People who tell you that are just trying to gaslight you. There is some truth to what your mind tells you. I'm not talking about the negative things you say to yourself, like, what the is I'm talking about that deep desire to do something that you're proud of with your life. 
That's the reason why you can't get out of bed, because you have no more dopamine. And if you also have ADHD, then good luck, my friend, because I've been there. Dopamine? We haven't seen those in 98. That's why it's so important that in your lowest moment, you look inside and you ask yourself, why is this happening to me? And how can I change the situation? You gotta find what makes you happy, what makes you want to get up in the morning and freaking fight for it. Because procrastination is going to ruin your life. It's not gonna be PMS. It's not gonna be PMDD. These things make your life a lot harder. But you know what's even worse? Living a whole life where you never once stop to question yourself if what you're doing is what is right for you. I hope that you can learn to see your PMS and PMDD in a different light. So become friends with yourself. Change your diet if need be. Become more active. Get up. Go for a walk. Take a break from social media. Look for a new job if the one that you have is really making you miserable. Your PMS is a wake-up alarm and not everybody has it. It's freaking hard, I know it. I'm with you. But you gotta listen to it. And subscribe to this channel. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this video. And yeah, take care.